Hey YouTube, it's Emma Gardner, and I'm really excited for you guys today because I am getting to show you everything that I've been growing, and I just get to talk to you guys today, which is always good. So basically, what's been going on is uh, a lot. Um, I first off got to take a nice little vacation slash trip that was much needed for my my brain and just get to relax and it was it was really great um i uh, i thoroughly enjoyed it so hopefully you guys didn't miss me too much uh so i'm back it was only like three days so i wasn't too late on the videos and i also i uh, had another run in with the blight that was there previously and i got it controlled a little bit quicker this time but it took out a couple more plants uh so it wasn't too good. I would have liked to see if I could just not have it at all, but apparently it comes in phases, and I feel like like we're like we're over the hump. I feel like we're getting better here, uh, so that's good news. Also, I am really excited to announce that um, I believe I'm going to be putting up the greenhouse very soon, and I'll show you guys that. That's kind of like a little surprise because you guys don't know anything about it yet. But um, yeah, all these plants are going to be going in there very soon. I'm going to show you guys uh, this great gift that I got. And um, I won't leak anything about it, but it, it's a greenhouse. A lot of people were asking me, so I just I want to tell you that it's a greenhouse, but I'm not going to tell you anything else. It's really cool. And so all my plants are going to be going out there very soon. Because, well, if anyone lives in Michigan or in this kind of region, uh, you guys know that we're having some great weather. And yeah, it might be a little a little uh, jump in the gun, but if they're in a greenhouse and it's pretty well sheltered, I think you're pretty good by now. I mean, it's definitely not the last official frost date or even remotely close to it. It's about like 15, 16 days off from the last official frost date. But by the time I get him out in the greenhouse, it'll be like 10 days to the last official frost date. And um, and so it, it's, uh, it's gonna be really exciting. I'm just so thrilled because we are having 60 degree days every day this week. So for someone like me, it could not come sooner. I was so thrilled that today I like went out to the garden and just ran outside and just did nothing. I just sat out there and enjoyed the weather. I didn't really have anything to do. But I also was going to plant some of my spring crops because you can plant your cool weather crops right about now and then they'll be coming up by the time it's last frost anyways. So I might be taking you out for an episode with that. But this episode is just going to be kind of a brief run through of what's been growing on and, and uh, just kind of what's been hit hard by the blight. Not much has happened, but uh, something did get hit a little bit so I'm gonna run through that with you and I'm gonna bring you in close so stay tuned alright so as you can see these are the McDonald's delight right there they are huge they have just exploded in the past week and those are the still can't read them uh, they are oh those are the pineapples those, uh, those ones right there are the pineapples this is the lemon ox heart and the Nyagus tomatoes, they're also doing very, very well. Then the Early Cascade and the Virginia Sweets and some other kind. I can't tell you right now. Whew, I got the hiccups. Um, and then this is the Great White and the Polish Linguisa. They're doing better. Uh, these ones are actually coming back. I thought I'd show you these ones. These ones are coming back slowly but surely. They're not dying off, which is good. And um, I do have a bit of this dead stuff that I need to continue taking off because, um, as you can see, uh, just that blight just wrecks the, the plants. But I thought I'd also show you down the line here. The banana legs is doing okay, not as good as it was, but it's coming back. Uh, the Oregon spring is doing okay, not as good as it was. We took a minor step back, I'm not going to lie, because uh, when I went on vacation some of the stuff kind of got a little neglected on the water and and then the disease took over and it just kind of went fast but this is the giant Belgium 
Sorry, get you aimed there. That's the giant Belgium. And some more giant Belgium. I lost all the copia due to the blight, so I I probably won't be doing copia this year because I'm out of seeds, so I'm kind of bummed about that. But there's not really nothing you can do about it. Then the orange strawberry tomato and the Thessaloniki are doing very well. They've shot up tremendously, so that's a plus. And then the uh, the Italian heirloom tomato is also doing better than it was, so that's also a plus. Also, I thought I'd randomly show you this really quick. That is the, uh, the what is this, the prickly pear, I think? Yeah, that's the prickly pear. And as you can see, it's got its little first cactus head on it, which is cool. I've never actually grown a prickly pear before, but... Then over here is the vintage wine and the big rainbow hillbilly and big Zach, and they're still trucking along. Nothing's stopping them, so no concern there. Then the uh, the black sea man is also doing really well. Also, I thought I'd show you. Do you see those little nodules right there on all those on all these plants? I thought that was a fungus. It's not. It's roots. If you look right there, oops, I'll get you focused there. If you look, those nodules are forming roots. I cannot believe it. I was so happy. There you go, focus there. Okay, those are roots. So I'm assuming once I plant them in the ground, they're just going to explode with, uh, with a nice root base. So I was totally thrilled to see that. And then this is black from Tula and pink Brandywine. They're also doing tremendously well. These ones got hit a little bit harder than the other ones. I lost a couple pink Brandywines back there. And as you can see, uh, they still look okay, but not nearly as tall as they were. They almost got shorter for some reason. I don't really know why. And then the uh, Japanese black Trifel got really tall, but lost a lot of foliage. So I'm going to have to transplant those deeper like I will with the rest of them, but you won't really notice the difference. And then the money maker tomato is obviously just just being a boss because it's growing tall again. I can't settle these things down. They're going to be like about a foot and a half tall by the time I transplant them. And then this is the Campbell's tomato. They're doing just absolutely amazing. Nothing has even touched these, so I'm I'm very thrilled with that. And then back there is the cream sausage doing absolutely amazing. The Wisconsin 55, or no, Sheboygan, sorry. The Sheboygan and Rutgers tomatoes are also doing very well. Then back there is a Roma tomato that finally came up, and that's doing extremely well. And then all the peppers are still small and slow growing. I don't know how to kick these bu puppies into high gear, but uh, I'll, I'll do it. And then also, I thought it'd be worth showing Look at that. <laughs> Guess what that is? That would be the uh, coffee plant. So, yeah, it's finally out of its shell and it's starting to grow. So, everything is good. So, that's all I have to show for you guys today. Give you guys one more brief overview of the tomatoes and what you guys will be hopefully seeing in big one gallon pots from now on. So, stay tuned and I'll keep you guys posted. Until next time, this is Emma Gardner reminding you to grow big or go home. See you guys. Bye.